Um, thank you, Steve. I, um, yes, I had a, the extraordinary honor to work for the person uh, named Hillary Rodham Clinton, Joe Biden, and I went to school with uh, someone named Barack Obama. And so I've known the president for 27 years and his wife, Michelle, and uh, I've had a chance to spend some time with him. And some, I've heard, it been in audiences where people speak after the president speaks and they say, oh my God, I'm speaking after the president of the United States. Let me tell you, that's not anything compared to what I just witnessed tonight. Um, I don't want to speak after the students of Stand and Deliver. <laughs> so, uh, but let me say, let me say that I am extraordinarily honored and humbled to receive this award along with my fellow honoree, which I've been so delighted to meet by email and then in person, the honor, Honorable Camelia uh, Valdez. Um, I also want to thank you, Steve, for all the things that you do. I mean, I don't know how you sleep. For all the things that you do, the things you've been doing for years, and the things that you can continue to do each and every day, including keeping us informed. I watch you on NJTV, and one. I learn a lot <laughs> <laughs> watching you. All the work you do at Stand and Deliver, and the things you do in so many ways, both big and small, to improve the lives of so many in Newark, across the state of New Jersey, and frankly, throughout the tri-state region. So thank you for all of, all of your efforts, past, present, and future. But most important, I want to just applaud all the young people, the extraordinary young people who are here tonight, and all the family members and friends who are supporters and who have really done so much to uplift so many young people here. Hearing in advance about your stellar efforts, your commitment to be the best that you can be, and to focus on how you, in fact, can be the change that we need to continue to progress as a community, continue to progress as a state, as a nation, and a world. That makes my heart full. My Verizon colleagues here know that I am an extraordinary, optimistic person. But as Steve mentioned, we have some challenging times in our communities, in Newark and across the country. We are facing very, very tough times, but I have hope because of all the work that I know that you're going to do in the future. I can't think of a better theme than to be the change. Dr. King showed us all, yes, through his words, but through his actions, that we can't be afraid of change, and in fact, we should embrace it. Uh, I am 50 years old, and so I was alive around the time that Dr. King was assassinated. I did not know him, but my, aunt, my father had the pleasure of meeting Dr. King on multiple occasions. Uh, I actually have a few photos of my father and Dr. King. And so my parents, both my father and mother, passed on to me and my four brothers uh, the need to focus on giving back. Uh, they always said to us, what you are are your are God's gifts to you, and what you do for others are your gifts uh, to God. They instilled that in, in me and my four brothers, one of whom was actually named after Dr. King. One of my brothers is Martin King Eve, and uh, he has a twin, and my parents named his twin brother after Malcolm X. Mm. So my other brother is named Malcolm X Eve, and they're my two youngest brothers. Uh, the most powerful thing that each and every one of us has is what's up here. It's our minds. And what's here? Our hearts and our souls. Our hearts and our souls give us the guidance and give us the courage to figure out what we should do in our personal lives and at work and trying to figure out what is the meaning of our purpose of our lives. But our mind, our education, our experiences, they give us the intellectual firepower, which each and every one of you have. They give us the wherewithal. They give us the strength to figure out how we actually accomplish what we set out to do. There is an old adage that the only thing that is constant is, in fact, change, and that is so true. Change is all around us. Some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. People sometimes are afraid of change because they're fearful of things that they don't understand. They don't know what's ahead of us. Um, but one of the things that you often hear about, for people to be successful, they say, what? Get out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid of change. Embrace it. If, in fact, you can't embrace it or you're fearful of it, just plow through and, in fact, try to, to lead it. I've personally gone through a lot of changes in my life. Yes, I've had an extraordinarily blessed life. You might think that I didn't have challenges. Each and every person in this room has had challenges. Steve has had challenges. Steve's father has had challenges. Each and every person in this room 
has had challenges. Sometimes we've confronted things that have not only knocked us down, but they have knocked us out. Mm. But they may have just knocked us out temporarily. It's not about have you confronted bad times, but most importantly, what you have done to address those bad times. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the tales because I'm gonna wrap up about 30 seconds, but I will tell you that I had a very harrowing experience a few years ago, and it was an unpleasant experience, but I'm extraordinarily blessed and extraordinarily grateful that I had that experience because through that, I learned that I was so much stronger than I thought I was. Through that experience, I learned, you know what, other than the person up above, there's very little that I fear. Very little that I fear. Other than thinking about what my heart and soul is directing me to do at work and in my everyday experience with relationships, both professional and personal. I joined Verizon, as Steve mentioned, in 2013 as the Vice President for State Government Affairs. You heard that I spent almost the entirety of my life in public service. I absolutely enjoyed, I was full with what I did. I made very little money, but I made a difference in people's lives every day, even if they never knew it. So it wasn't an easy decision for me to leave public service, but I'm so glad I did. And there is no company for which I would have left public service for other than Verizon. The companies at the forefront of change, thank you in advance for all of you who are our customers. Um, we are a leading technology company of our time that is proud to call New Jersey our home. We have a credo that every single person in our company follows from our chairman and CEO down to our most junior employee. That credo defines who we are. One line in our credo says, and I quote, change energizes us. And that is something that we at Verizon take to heart. Change can be a catalyst for doing things you never thought you could do. The bottom line is this, not only should you not fear change, not only should you not fear change, but I hope in fact that you will lead it. The extraordinary leader Mahatma Gandhi said, Quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. These are words that should inspire us all. So in closing, I say to all of you, but especially to all the young people, all the extraordinary people in this room, take charge of your lives. Take charge of your lives. Go to college, because you can all go. Take charge of your lives and go forth and be the change, lead the change that you wish to see in the world. Thank you and God bless you all.